My name is Sulin Lao Chu Tong. It's Lao as in ow, not low as in o. So pain, ow, and not surprise. I'm a painter, I'm an artist, I'm a writer, a visual artist, a creative person. I was born in Trinidad um, at the Princess Elizabeth Clinic, um, which is somewhere by the General Hospital, or it used to be. Um, I moved to Grenada about 25, 30 years ago. Um, I like it here. It's a smaller community. My mother is from here. My mother's family is here. And um, this is where I create. I just needed a break and I came across to Grenada because since I'm six months old, I've been coming to Grenada. So I came here to see my grandmother and so on and so forth. And then there was a pharmacy program starting, the first pharmacy program starting with the Ministry of Health. And my family, I've come from a family of doctors. And um, at the time we had, a, our family owned a pharmacy. So I came and did that, did, did the pharmacy course. Uh, through the Ministry of Health um, and yeah so I stayed and I guess I didn't really move back to Trinidad at all I go back and forth two or three times a year but I have not relocated to Trinidad for um, any particular length of time save and except um, right after Hurricane Ivan when I went back to Trinidad for about three months four months um, just to wait out all the chaos that was happening here with people rebuilding and people gouging prices and you know that kind of thing. There are for me a lot of advantages of living in Grenada. First of all it's lot, a lot less stressful um, than, than Trinidad. I mean I love Trinidad don't get me wrong but it's a lot less stressful. Um, up until recently uh, my house had no burglar bars um, and it's that sense of freedom to begin with that is that for me is a plus in living in Grenada. Um, people still stop and say good morning, how are you? You know, um, uh, and it, it, it's almost like a small town living. Uh, if I want great excitement, I get on a plane and I, you know, go to Trinidad or go elsewhere. But the beauty for me of living in Grenada is is just being able to look out the window and you see the mountains and the fresh air and nothing is too far. You get on a bus and you go where you're going um, and you come back and you feel rejuvenated and refreshed. You know, um, that to me is the beauty of being here. The serenity, the calm, the hospitality of the people. And of course, majority of my family is here. So, you know, I quite enjoy that. A normal day for me, hmm. Um, it, it depends. I mean, my, my days are never normal. Um, you know, you get up in the morning, you have your coffee or lemongrass tea or whatever you feel like drinking that day. You open the fridge and you eat with whatever is in the fridge that day. Um, and then usually uh, I, I paint or I write. Um, and then I take breaks in between to, to do the laundry, you know, to go outside and see if there are any pumpkins hiding outside in the garden. Um, I'll go visit one or two of my aunts because we all live on the same property. I'll probably call my sister and bug her once or twice during the day. Um, but usually it's, it's painting or writing or constructing some kind of paper because I've, I've had my papers published in a couple of um, university journals, conference papers, things like that. And that's it. And then I get to bed at whatever time I get to bed. But food always influences you because you can't, well, I can't paint if I'm hungry, that's for sure. Um, and fortunately for me, um, I eat everything and anything except rhubarb, which I really don't like, and um, peanuts, which I'm intolerant, intolerant to, but everything else I eat. And I love breadfruit in any form, fashion, or shape. So, you know, I am a happy puppy whenever breadfruit is in season. When I moved here in whatever year I moved here in, my first art residency, so my first travel for painting to paint was in 2008. That was funded by UNESCO Andorra. Andorra is a principality, uh, it's a country situated between France and Spain. Um, Andorra is kind of ruled uh, by France and Spain half and half. 
beautiful country, serious mountains. So I went there to paint. That was my first time away, first time in Europe. Um, spent two weeks there, met, oh God, I don't know how many of us were there, maybe 20, 30 foreign artists all in one space. And to me, it was like going to art school because everybody trained differently, who was self-taught, who were classically trained, whatever. And in that two weeks, I absorbed so much. I got addicted to doing this traveling for paint, to, to, to paint. Since then, I have been to um, Romania, China, uh, Haiti. Um, I just came from Switzerland. I'm sure I miss a few places in between there. Um, but Switzerland, I spent, this was the longest one. It was in a little village called Feuterzoi in the canton of Bern in the Alps. So I'm up in the mountains and I'm seeing snow every day and cows, lots of cows. Um, and I spent two and a half months there just creating, creating a lot, a lot of work. Um, I went to, to do um, traditional masquerade because that's some of the work that I do in Grenada. And then I went to see what kind of masquerade, what kind of carnival they had. And then I ended up going to a valley on the other side and doing a mask carving workshop and found out about their carnival, the type that they do, where they dress all in, it looked like old mask costumes, but it's heavy animal skins and wooden and leather masks. And they scared the bejesus out of people in the snow. So, I mean, that was really, really cool, you know. Um, but I say all that to say that when I travel, I learn. When I travel, I bring Grenada to where I'm going. Um, and I always try to find a connection between Grenada and where I'm traveling to, my, 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 my destination where I am. Um, and I represent Grenada because I live here. A lot of my work um, has to do with Grenada, Grenada history, culture, traditions. Um, so basically my work is very much influenced by my Grenada environment. I have done work um, that has to do with a carnival, traditional masquerade, I've done work that has to do with um, plantations and the colonial era um, and so on and so forth. There, there are different types of, of, of work, of, of series of works that I do, but the majority of it is grounded in Grenada history, Grenada culture, Grenada environment. I mean, I could look out at the mountains and just come up with an idea, for example, um, of, of something to do with the mountains. A couple of years ago, um, I live across from one of the quarries. And one day I looked out, and to me, the way the quarry was being sculpted by the machines, it looked like the mountain was screaming. So I ended up doing a quick sketch of this screaming mountain, you know? Uh, my only regret is that I didn't put up a camera and take a shot every day so that I could see the mountain screaming into nothing because a lot of the mountain now is missing, <laughs> you know? But, but that is, Grenada just impacts you. I mean, you just open the door, you smell the air and all of a sudden you have an idea to go do something. Um, what energizes me is when people like my work um, and they have positive things to say about it. Or better yet, when they're curious and they ask questions about the work, that energizes me because then I get a chance to explain, to interact um, with the people and the work. And, and to me, that's important. It's not a matter of just sticking a piece of art on the wall and having somebody just walk past it, you know, kind of glance at it out of the corner, the eye kind of thing. You want somebody to stop and look at it and go, what on earth was the artist thinking? And if the artist is there, me, then I can say, well, and give them the story. Because most of my work, there's a story behind it. Some of the stories are long, some are short, but there's always a story behind the artwork. Um, things have shifted a little bit over the years. A lot of people have left um, the art community because they realize that there's just um, no way they can manage it. 
um, with very few people purchasing art because there's um, little disposable income for this particular type of luxury. And then there's the issue of um, art materials still being classified as luxury items. So, so you, you pay more duty and, and that kind of thing um, on your materials. And I mean, creating artwork is, is food for the soul. You know, the way you grow vegetables to feed your stomach, you know. Um, so the Arts Council and a couple of the artists have been lobbying over the years off and on to try to get the duties reduced on the materials so that we can create. Because, I mean, we are a creative uh, nation. When you have art as part of the curriculum, and art I'm using to cover uh, painting, sculpture, photography, whatever the creative arts, theater the whole bit. So, okay, let me use arts. When you have arts on the curriculum, right, it not only helps the individual to discover and develop themselves, but it also allows the individual to expand their thoughts outside the box where the parliament building is going to be. That building should house a national collection of art because there are other parliament buildings in the world, including the one in the UK, that has its own uh, collection, national collection of art, which we do not have in Grenada, and nobody really gives a flying fettuccine if, they, if we have one or not, which to me is a disgrace because we have so many creative persons here. We have people who have their work in the, in the UK and the royal collection. I mean, these are deceased Grenadian artists. And we don't have their works in a national space here. Right? So when I mentioned that, they said, yes, there was a budget fit and so on and so forth. All that was fine and dandy. <sighs> Unfortunately, the building is being put up but the, the money that was allocated for the artwork, and that includes paintings, sculptures, using parts of the building, incorporating art within it, which would not have made any great change to the structure of the building, that particular part of the budget was reallocated. So to my understanding, there's going to be zero artwork in there, right? There's no national uh, collection going in there. The Grenada National Museum does not have a national collection of art. There is no national collection of art anywhere. And it doesn't have to be in one building. It could be split across all the government buildings, but under the, the, the term national collection, yes? But that's not going to happen because it's not important. You ever heard of the Bilbao ex, uh, experiment, or the Bilbao project? B-I-L-B-A-O. It's a place in Spain. It was a port town, an industrial area, and it had almost shut down because there was nothing else happening. And art saved that town, and now it's known for art. What happened was uh, one of the big museums, I believe it was the Guggenheim, went in and built this big building. And people thought they were crazy because they're building this huge art museum in the middle of nowhere. But it's the Guggenheim. You build it, people will come. And people came, and not only to see the art that was going in there, but also to support the ancillary services. Because if you have a museum and whatnot, you have to have the people that deal in with that. So you need the movers, you need the people to handle stuff, you're employing people. And then you have to have all the outside in, in, the, in the surroundings, you have cafes, the shops, because people are going to come and they will want to move around and spend their money and so on. And within a couple of years, what people thought was a crazy idea has now made this place in Spain a tourism hotspot. They come to see the art, they come to see the place, they spend their money. Why we can't do that here? I wrote a paper about that a couple of years ago. I mean, I'm not saying that Guggenheim is going to reach to Grenada, but we have to understand that we are at the end of the cruise ship itinerary. We are the last point. And by the time the people on the cruise ships reach here, they will come out, take a photo and say, oh, I've been to Grenada and get back on the ship. 
They're not spending much money, right? If they go on a tour, we'll be very grateful that they go on a tour. But they, there has to be more than sun, sea, sand, and, and carnival in August to bring people here. We have to have something that will bring people here year round. And I believe that the arts in totality, if we had an infrastructure in, in, in place, supported, functioned, maintained, uh, people to run it, all that kind of stuff, right? That to me, that would help our economy. And that to me is why I think art or the arts are important to the diversification of the Grenada economy. The lowest point that I have, I have had as an artist is where I was creating a lot of work because the idea, the, the series, because I work in series, it was just coming and coming and coming and I was creating a lot, a lot of work. But I wasn't selling anything. I guess because of the, maybe the time of year, maybe the series that I was working on, I just, it was, I wasn't selling anything. Um, and I got to the point where I would say for maybe a month, a month and a half, I was reduced to water and there was a plant growing outside called a, a chaya. I think it's chayasma is the, is the name or chayamanza, I can't remember. Anyway, it's, 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 it's a plant that you, you pick the leaves and you cook the leaves and it eats like a spinach, like a tree spinach. And I was reduced to eating that water and I think eggs is what I had. And that was the absolute lowest point absolute lowest point and, uh, and I remember one night just breaking down in tears and thinking do I really want to do this art business because this art business is killing me you know and I mean I can turn my hand at virtually anything um, but I really want to do this art so at the end of the day I had to decide okay I am a qualified pharmacist, so I went back and I got my license and so forth. And then I went to start doing part-time work at some, a couple of retail pharmacies who needed um, replacement pharmacists, you know, the ones who went on vacation and so on. And yes, it paid the bills, thank God, but oh my Lord, it just kind of, you come home in the evening and you're so tired, you're so exhausted because you're giving your all as a, well, I give my all as a pharmacist, you know. I don't just say, okay, here are your five tablets, go your way. I want to make sure you understand what you're taking and answer your questions and so on. So at the end of the day, when I am exhausted from dealing with 20, 30 customers or clients, to come home and just look at the canvas and realize you have nothing in you to create. So for a while, you know, it was, it was paint or starve. And I opted to not starve. <laughs> So I do, I do what I do um, because I love it, but sometimes it's just very difficult. I am Sulin Lao Chutang, artist, proud to be Grenadian and Trinidadian, and I've been on Let's Talk.